Yo, 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 what's up, everybody? Thank you for tuning in to yet again another fantastic indie creator interview. It's your Cape Crusader Cody, and we're keeping it geekly with our new guest, Chris Solis. We're here to break down his brand new awesome comic, A Flag to Fly, and everything in between. Chris, welcome to the stream in the brightest day, in the darkest night. We're here to keep it geekly tonight. Hey, man. I am excited to be here. Thank you so much for the chance to come and talk to your audience. It is uh still a dream coming true as i make comic books and come talk to everybody that i love oh dude i you man i'm gonna leave this interview with my head far too big i'll have to get like <laughs> a stick with a wheel on it to hold my head while i'm walking dude, get it because <laughs> you deserve it all the indie people that you guys highlight i'm always grateful to find all the books that i do through you guys it's literally just as important though being a creator because you offer a job to all those creators that we highlight and as well you know you have a whole creative team helping you know create your vision um but first Amen. and foremost before we dive into this book let's start with the basics of who you are and how you got into creating comics yeah for sure i am chris Solis. i am a long time full life fledged reader of comic books uh started doing punk rock and a lot of fun stuff and through my teens and 20s and eventually went to go see neil gaiman talking about norse mythology who told me writers write something about that made me click so hard and just made me sit down and start write fiction and it poured out of me and i've loved it ever since since then i've joined scott snyder's uh, substack class mm -hmm basically showed me that the community is out there to find and got me started really connecting with so many people being in the tales from the cloakroom volume one anthology that started out of that class lit everything up and i have not stopped or slowed down since and it's been great isn't it like something remarkable about a, a, a statement so simple uh that just packs such a punch i had matt wilson on to talk about his book and uh, i asked him for a piece of advice at the end and he's like if you're an aspiring writer stop be a writer and i was just like wow dude like yeah something about that just like dude, really our letterer was one of our first people that i ever pitched a flag to fly to and he was just like yeah that's actually pretty good just do it make it happen if you need to make it better make it better but get it done and that stuck with me forever too of just yeah if you want to make something you should just make it <laughs> why not like who's stopping you who's you stopping are. you yeah you are yeah exactly. exactly i deal with that every day too because like as a podcaster i'm like dude i would love to do this i would love to do this and i just had a, a sit down where someone was talking about how they came from press to you know creation and they're like i literally felt like i was just doing reviews to keep myself from writing and i'm like dude like is this me like with interviewing like <laughs> oh yeah if you follow your dreams it's beautiful Keep so doing it. what was that story that you uh created uh in the S scott snyder's uh, anthology you know what was uh, what was that like for you yeah actually it was just kind of a toe dip really quick i wanted something fast and kind of explored a lot of the themes that scott liked to enjoy which action or little darkness and i came up with a spy thriller called jacket racket and it follows uh julia ripley which uh is a an assassin for hire but of the top is caliber mm -hmm. and she gets basically capitalism turns on her where her company and they now target her and she has no idea and that little quick three page turnaround of just her interacting with the company that's now after her sets up a whole bunch of stuff that i'm hoping just to touch on all throughout my career of come back to her and have some fun running around I, as a spy <laughs> i really love that concept too what was it like for you you know creating those three pages i often hear if you're able to pack a story in three pages you can do a book it came a lot I was putting towards of uh, issue by issue, making sure that you had a rise and fall, making sure that you hit kind of these important parts if you're doing the snapshot. But of course, the smaller, the more you have to realize what's important to pack in there. And it was not easy trying to come up with three pages. It could have definitely been six pages, but it was it it hit it so hard, just so fast that it felt exactly like that character should kind of do that. How did you that, feel? It, it was beautiful. <laughs> How, how'd you feel when you started getting those interiors back? Like the first time seeing your actual, you know, words come to life. It was down to the wire, actually, trying to find the artist. Uh, <laughs> I, I got my script uh, accepted, but then didn't have the artist until probably a week after the deadline. So they gave me the time to really put it in there. And since it was only three pages, he knocked it out. Uh, Xenobrain, I forget exactly the name, but I know that's what he goes by on Instagram. And that was amazing. Uh, Jacket Ragged shines only because of that art and just all the effort that went into there. You know, Beautiful. and there's a certain, you know, there's a certain wonder if maybe because it was past deadline that it like just forced that to come out. Like, I don't, for me, I set timers. Like if I'm editing or trying to do something, set 15 minute timers just to put that pressure. Yeah, amen. I love that kind of stuff because it does. It 
breeds some innovation and kind of knocks you into like i have to get this done no matter how i get it done it's going to be good mm -hmm. <laughs> you're just going to accept that but so many times it's brought up better ideas and things that i would have never thought of if i sat there for a week you know that's awesome like we that. have we have uh, j michael miller uh joining us on youtube crossover a geekly flag to fly when i uh, yeah. Hey, hey, I, yeah. has a ring to it. Has a ring to <laughs> I it. I like it. Speaking of a flag to fly, you said uh, this idea came to you when you were, you know, before? Yeah, actually, it's probably a good five, six years in development. But uh, just more and more getting into comic books, I realized I wanted to start with an early story. And then I wanted something that uh, kind of challenged younger readers. So it's mm -hmm. kind of designated a YA story, young adult. But uh, my, my go-to is The Hobbit, where it was a child story but opened up the world for so much bigger stuff. And I really want to try to do that with this. And six issue miniseries is a perfect little encapsulation of exactly where this universe is at and what this fantasy little crowd has to go through to get there. It's a lot of fun and a lot of silliness. Uh, Lane Lloyd brings amazing art to it that adds amazing. a whole layer to it. Amazing art to it. Like I had an idea going into this book that I wanted Sam Keith and Sword in the Stone crossed over. I wanted the Max fight scenes but i wanted sword in the stone characters and after seeing lane it's just that's a whole thing my characters heard. telling their jokes is perfect. perfect oh sorry so, sorry about that i was gonna say uh, i didn't mean to cut you i thought you might have froze there uh we are having a little bit of internet issues here and there guys so if there's any freezing no big deal this, this stream is just obviously too hype to have that perfect connection <laughs> so all the fires how'd you end up uh getting in contact with lane like how did that happen i mean they are such a phenomenal artist i had them do a profile picture for me that just blew my mind gorgeous um he did a story in the tales from the cloakroom volume one mm -hmm. and it's it's amazing in that so you should definitely check that out posts on twitter twitter still connecting people when it did and more and more <laughs> i saw it was just yes that fits exactly the tone i'm looking for that that's the theme i'm going for mm -hmm. his weird spawn and batman characters are so out there but yet so recognizable that it's a impossible not to think of stuff that you can do with that art it's great it's funny you say that i have their print of batman up on my nice. wall right now i that Beautiful. i probably saw the same image it was like just like wow this is like the, the way they utilize just everything the designs the character designs you, you know no it's lane lloyd the minute you see any of those pictures and it's that's I, it's so hard to have a style that unique yeah. and distinctive this late in the game of how many people have tried to really bend the rules or do their caricatures and everything else. It's great to find somebody with a unique style and really brings it every time they step up to the. So uh, who else is involved uh, on this book? For sure. I mentioned David Lentz. He is our letterer. He's, he has great work on Good Boy and a lot of other things. Uh, Source Point, really special. Um, then there's Aubrey Lynn Jepson, our editor, amazing editor. Uh, then there's Rachel Disler who did a variant cover. Terry Siska That's did so a cool. Dude, those covers are beautiful. And then I have Rob Jones did beyond the inner cover. It's mm -hmm. gorgeous. All of these people, artists full and through, amazing to work with. I'm so proud of all the stuff that we got done. This actually might be a geekly flag to fly. I had Rob do my logo, the keeping a geekly logo. Like, I, I'm just like, <laughs> did Perfect. this actually <laughs> a nice little roundabout of yeah, yeah, all coming up together. <laughs> I love that. I love that so, feeling. Community. What 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 is a flag to, to to fly about? I mean, when I read it, I felt so many different emotions, and it was there was so much uh, that I want to get a, a chance to read through it again because it felt like there's so much to unpack that you know you want to read it a second time because you know how you know what to expect, so you look now, for things differently. Yeah, so you can look for some stuff. Uh, definitely, it is a comedy adventure fantasy uh ya like i was saying but that's the kind of footnote for it either way uh definitely leans into the older style of comic books of comedy first adventure second but all the way non-stop just trying to keep it original and uh you get that feeling of nostalgia for a chosen one kind of fantasy story of some kid's gonna pull it from the stone and uh, all of the questions will be answered but you quickly realize no one is ready to be the chosen one in the story and it's way fun watching them try to figure out who's going to be the leader in all yeah, of this. I, and one thing I really love, even though this is a young adult, you know, 
book it's you know for someone like me i love like gore i love like just brutal stuff i really really felt attached to some of the messages uh within this like the the you know not being able to live up to expectations like that is such a heavy hitting thing we go through as children always always thing that your parents kind of thought was the perfect emblem of your life mm -hmm. and you kind of realize it takes more than just being able to picture it and that really touches on it and then friendships there uh, a lot of great people in the book between uh leon and george love those two and their little quick kitchen back and forth and so <laughs> much of that is like lifelong friends and leon and stuff that like you can't learn to count on people you need to look for who's actually worth being a leader mm -hmm. sometimes you gotta look at yourself and that's what a lot of those characters are not doing and it's great so i mean leon is that uh is that a nod to resident evil by any chance uh no actually i wanted lion <laughs> themes for the family wren Ooh, and that I like just kind of carried on so leon leong was that nice if they almost have the same name and you can play with it a lot and they could be confused a lot mm -hmm. but I, I wanted lion themes throughout a lot of it i really because, like uh, that it sounds powerful and fun yeah yeah no that that's cool because we were talking about video games you know b before backstage so i was curious if there was like maybe some more easter eggs like are there any easter eggs that keen-eyed readers can expect um just hmm I'm i I, I, know, I, I know i know i know uh, know like that no there was a note in there i know when uh um, the art, the artists, whenever they're doing stuff, they like to hide little things. So I, when I, when, when I read, I looked at that and I was like, yes, <laughs> yes, yes. I have actually written in the script, but Lane has it written beautifully and extra. Perfect. Um, there is a, a nice nod to my, my older comedy roots of a, a red Fox line in there. That one's great. The, uh, I'm coming Elizabeth. If you ever <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Sanford and Son, I love Sanford and Son so much. So I that's awesome. You know, and it's yeah. it's 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 wild too. We uh, when you think of like how TV shows have have evolved since then, evolved right? So much, yeah. Everything it's, when, really has. When you some watch something like that, compare over. compared to like you know, and a lot of stuff doesn't carry over like the the taste yeah. of of the era. But when Definitely. you just watch like just production values and how shows like how they would have to set up stuff differently, you used to like make stuff work and mm -hmm. every time played it off expertly it was just yep they sold it to me when i was watching it i didn't have think of had questions later on you look at the production of it and it's cardboard stapled to some <laughs> yeah. stuff and they just sold it it was great i love those old feelings of i don't know like even uh old mexican sitcoms that they used to have zany real fun stuff slapstick comedy mm -hmm. you didn't really need to understand a lot but you've got all the jokes all the you, you wait wake up at like three or four in the morning it's like yep. low Rider. Yep. <laughs> Everyone jumped on the trampoline. You're like, all right, is that time? Right, let's do this. <laughs> hey, speaking of time, though, I think right now is the perfect time. Let's pull up the Kickstarter and let's see what yeah. all the hype is about. So, a flag to fly number one, fantasy adventure, GOT, uh, sword in the stone, $1,411 of a $3,300 goal, 43 backers, and 17 days left to go with Project We Love. Congratulations yes, on that. Thank you this so is your much. first Kickstarter. How are you feeling about it? So surprised on so many levels. Just, I knew getting the artists that I got to work on it could definitely get me noticed a lot of the way, but seeing the response from those artists really, really bumped up a lot and seeing it actually noticed by Kickstarter and by the people who backed it early by it, some of the the premium tiers got scooped up really quick that was just a huge thing and really great to see and uh, the, fifth, almost 50 percent there and that's been amazing like that's our first week it's beautiful just straight killing it too so let's yeah. take a look at some of these interiors uh, yes, we have please. the cover Wait. right here uh, who do we see here yeah, this is Buck carrying Shin the Sorcerer and Leon, the nice little lord kid, clinging to their back. Bane and Moy did, of course, this cover, cover A, and this is mm -hmm. the main one. It's, as you can tell, definitely them. And I love, like, the color palettes Lane uses. Like, it's, it's, it's just gorgeous. It is. It highlights so much of that, and it gives you that real fantasy kind of feel. Mm-hmm. And then the sorcerer, I love this with the purple iguana. It almost reminded me of like a chest sizer uh, cat, but like a reptile version. I loved it too. Really, that tail gives a lot. Yeah, so yeah, that, yeah. Great. And yep, little Zilla. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, so, so what are we seeing happen here within these first pages? Give us a little bit, a little bit of a breakdown. Just a nice little introduction kind of moment. Uh, 
Leong, the, the Lord of Titlestead, where we have seen the flags flying up there in that first panel, is coming to check on his, his visitor and guest, uh, Shin the Sorcerer. And he's kind of making sure that nothing's about to explode if he goes in the room. <laughs> uh, Shin, of course, tells him, no, I've been here for four years. I've never blown up anything. Nothing's ever gone wrong. But Morn gets into it just uh, worried about the world, worried about the king that's causing trouble. And mm -hmm. now they're expecting uh, Bok, the knight commander, to come and give them a nice little rundown. And we still see Shin uh, preparing his little potion and feeding it to Zilla. <laughs> I love Zilla too. What you know? What what inspired you to give him a big you know big iguana like this? You know, I have loved lizards for a mm -hmm. long time. I have never owned them myself, but it always seemed like a really cool wizard. Like, uh, what are those? The, the warlock? I want it. The witch. Witches have them. Man, I can't think of it. Oh, they're oh, familiar, 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 familiar. That's yes, the word yes. I could not find. Yeah, familiars. And I like the idea of, you know, a sorcerer not having a raven or something tip, stereotypical. Mm -hmm. A little lizard would be great. If you, you know, named it after Godzilla, even better. It kind of, you know, speaking of old movies, like Stone Cold from like the 1980s or whatever, the biker dude had the big Komodo dragon. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm like picking that up. Right, and I, 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 I love that. Yeah, he because he would he would feed him like milkshakes. That, but man, that's perfect. Yeah, yeah, that's so <laughs> cool. That is so cool. And guys, if you are watching right here, is the link. If you can't back, simply putting this wherever you can works as you know just as well. Word of mouth is 100 percent free. And check sure. this out. There is a link to get a super preview right here. Uh, how many pages extra is going to be there? Just two extra pages past that Kickstarter one, but still, that's five pages on global com. Good old global comics for mm -hmm. holding it down for a lot of the indie crowd. Um, a lot of fun stuff you should definitely sign up for. And then right here are the rewards. So let's go ahead and check them out. So yeah, we've already actually, gone past the early bird stuff. So yeah, yeah. Oh. sadly, we can't get those anymore. But and then we have the uh, add-ons. Uh, so yep. before we get to Each, the add-ons, so. yeah, go ahead. Start off with uh, even a dollar if you donate towards the cause. We'll put your name in the thank yous. Help the cause. That's a nice little starter. Just anybody who can donate anything. We'll take mm -hmm. it. We and then a PDF it. at 12 bucks, outstanding price. Uh, how many pages is this again? 22 pages, not including yeah, back matter. So we're probably looking at like 26. Uh, hopefully. Let's go. Yeah. And three bucks more, uh, you get a flag flyer. So the PDF uh, credit in the book and a physical copy as well. So for three bucks more, you can yeah. get that physical book in your hands. We have That's 15. We love. 15 or more, the B flag waiver. So is this a uh, cover B right here? Yeah, it is by Rachel Disler. Uh, amazing cover. But yeah, each cover gets its own tier if you want to do that and then add on whichever ones you want. If not, there is the... Oh, here we go. As this beautiful Leon, this B, <laughs> trying to still stand up. Uh, I love it every time. The little missing the tooth. And, yeah, <laughs> just completely beat. Knows exactly. No, it's, I'm trying. I'm trying. <laughs> And then we have the Flake Flyer Elite. So what what is this going to be uh, the, the sticker set included? Sticker set included? Correct. We got Lane Lloyd doing stickers. That's so awesome. really fun art and slap them all around. We love people getting the word out. Hopefully mm -hmm. it'll inspire the next issue. People so is it, it up. is it spoiler to talk about this guy right here a little bit? I or? mean, I don't think so. That assassin it comes in pretty hot and pretty handed. What ends up happening at the end of that, that might be a little spoilery. But uh, so definitely I was just curious fight. about the design because I really love like the golden skull, the hood. Yeah. So I gave pretty much just I wanted uh, ninjas that also had uh, Viking kind of gear on. And that lane ran with and more and more he came back with different characters if you notice each assassin has a a different kind of motif that they're going mm -hmm. for but that guy was definitely the number one that i was like this is our this is the big one let's do that one as the sticker too and it, i regret nothing <laughs> i think it's awesome and then we have uh pledge 25 or more you get the grand flag flyer elite so that includes everything listed previously and then the three pack high quality uh cover prints as well so are those prints down below picture of uh, each of the Oh, the covers? The covers. But okay. those will be, yep. Still dressed, still really nice. Five by sevens, high quality, but just something you can slap up and use as a poster or something while you read your book. And then Bannerman, 40 bucks, get all three covers. We have the Lord Bannerman, uh, which is going to get you all three covers, uh, the three pack and the sticker set as well. That's correct. Uh, That's one. Give You're us right. a little bit the about this, the Lord Collector. This looks like a heavy hitter. So.
really fun. It gives you all the stuff, but it also gets you each three of the covers signed by me. Ooh, very nice. Fulfilling all of it. I will gladly sign if you would just give us a little bit extra. <laughs> but uh, yeah, it gets you all the stuff. Gets you the sticker set. Gets you the prints. Awesome collector's books. And then we have the retail tier as well as the by character premium. So uh, they get to be a character in the story? Correct. There's only one of those tiers. I would snatch it up as soon as possible. But yeah, uh, we have two issues, two and three, already kind of plotted out, and they have mm -hmm. definitely rooms to design characters. So if you want to see Lane Lloyd put you in a comic book, we would gladly love to have you. With and a pet get, of choice? Yeah, a pet of choice if you'd like. What about their fat cat? Yeah, of course that's fat cat. <laughs> I don't know if he would fit. He might take a, it might have to be a splash page. Maybe it's it pretty huge. Maybe it's the fat cat has you as the pet. It's great. Ah, <laughs> uh, you, you got me. You got me. Creator yeah, Lord yeah. Editor Premium Tier, $320. So this, this looks like the... I, the okay, so yeah, I am a huge believer in the comic community, and I have been just hoisted up and put on shoulders so high that I love every second of making comic books with these people. And I want to pass that along. I, I think an editor is one of the biggest parts that I got benefits from and having somebody that knew the themes that I wanted to go and the style that I was looking for really guide my story towards that. And so I am offering two sessions with Aubrey Lynn Jepson, our editor, the, the editor of A Flag to Fly also did editing on uh, Tales from the Cloakroom. Amazing, mm -hmm. amazing editor. We'll definitely work with you and you get two sessions. So you give her a script, she'll come back with notes. You work on the script again, come back again, give it to her the script and she'll give you more notes after that. And you can keep working back and forth if you need more or not. But she can also introduce you to artists that she's worked with. She can introduce, she is a letterer herself. Mm -hmm. You need that. And just so much benefits come from working in a group in people that want to make comics it's good to have somebody and i would love if people sign up for that because we need more comic books <laughs> yeah and i mean to the price for motivation you know being surrounded by people who are actively creating who've actively have done it that's invaluable i mean obviously this tier has a price but like the what you can gain from it like that could take you and lead you for years to come like Definitely. especially a good editor you know can have such yeah. a big impact on you as somebody who took Shelly Bond, Shelly Bond, who worked for Vertigo in their heyday, uh, she has an editing class for comic books, and that is the hugest thing. Any of those online classes is just finding your community and getting to work with more people that want to work towards the thing that you want to work. And this is a great first step if anybody's just undecided if they want to do that or really want to take the time in their own story. This can make it shine and really pop it out for you. And, I mean, you're still getting all of everything the yeah. yeah yeah so yeah, i mean that is a big bang for your buck you're getting you know the editor session but you're still getting you know fake to uh, flag to fly um issue uh one all three covers signed naming mm -hmm. credits everything uh flag commission premium tier so this looks like another big one too so commissioned by uh rachel uh, disler yeah rachel disler just in case you want to get some of the premium premium perks with more art instead of your own writing uh, this is definitely for you she does uh, five by seven commissions so you call complete color up to three mm -hmm. characters you get to des design it yourself if you'd like if not she will definitely throw in a flag to fly characters for you and give you something completely personal and just your own and so her style is gorgeous i love this i, I love, love this like so the assassins much. coming off right here just looks so awesome so much of that back and forth i love it's yes. so good so wow, this is the, the campaign in its entirety. Everyone watching right here is the link. Like I said previously, if you can't back, put this wherever you can because word of mouth helps just as much. And just, just as much. getting that movement going is yes. is important. You know, the algorithm works in the, the creator's favor if people are helping boost that. So Amen. Chris, Thank after you. you know going through that Kickstarter, what would you like to say to anyone who might be on the fence about backing? Um, it is just an indie comic stream and ready produced technically i have all the art done in the issue number one so there's not going to be any kind of delay of getting it ready uh we have mm -hmm. back matter being made right now by dave lentz and that's going to be as soon as this thing funds and we're cleared for it on may 1st it is going right over to comic impressions our printer and we will get that back turned around as soon as possible and as easy as possible with great books great quality we have uh, Prince Joe uh, Manzono. Uh, my uh, apologies if I pronounced that wrong. Over on Facebook, where is that available? Right there is that link for you to check out in chat. Be sure to check it out. And like I said, if you like what you see back, if not, just share it with your friends. So, Chris, yeah. you know, you seem, you know, 
so helpful with that tier to, to want to help the community. So I think this next question you're going to like. I always love asking for a little bit of advice to help the community. So with that being said, for anyone who's just having trouble getting motivated at starting, what would you say to them to kind of help them get that little kick? Um, honestly, as much as it kind of serves my purpose, I would say get an editor. It could cost you out of pocket, but after the set, feel like you can believe in your story more. You know exactly what it was lacking and you can work on it. These things are huge. And if you don't just have the friends to have a writing circle and kind of bounce it around like that, hiring an editor can really help that. And I think it's super important to have those people just to kind of rein you back when you, you need, you're going too far with your ideas. Mm -hmm. Sometimes it's, they're great ideas, but you just, and they go complete the crap. <laughs> well, and I mean, another thing is you could look at something all day long and not realize a mistake where a fresh pair of eyes is going to be like, what is it this? Is huge value of just walking in. That's what's been bugging me this whole time, of course. Got it. Love that. <laughs> no, that is awesome. So, Chris, I mean, what have you been doing lately? You know, video games, comic books, movies, you know, what are you consuming? I am replaying uh, Breath of the Wild because Ooh. Tears of the Kingdom is coming. And it is such an amazing game. More, you more get that on Mario Kart all the time. Bro. We're gonna have to go, go head to head, dude. I, I'm a I, 350 I hours. New, I'm a. <laughs> I have the new courses. I have a lot of stuff. Me and my girlfriend often play that just to settle arguments. It's great. <laughs> oh my god, to settle arguments. See me, and my yeah. girlfriend. We met through Bloodborne, so that, that's a little bit more <laughs> that's vicious. A little, <laughs> little harder to settle arguments there after you die your 50th time. But yeah. Oh my god, sure. it's it's perfect because when they go to attack Eperium and Visceral Attack, it's like, what were you saying again? Like, <laughs> what? <laughs> so uh, comic books, movies. You know, we talked game. Any of those that you're hitting too? Yeah. Um, I just picked up uh, Know Your Station number five that's mm -hmm. the end of that little run and that has been amazing for as funny as it is to be that brutal inside is awesome um scarlet witch uh marvel's Ooh. little take on their little series that has been really great just to see kind of them touchstone in her character of all the places that she's been already mm -hmm. and kind of focus her into almost exactly okay it's really great um doggy brief after thought of aftershock mm -hmm. now that they're kind of done that's been a blast i'm really glad that i've continued that but uh comic book wise that's where i'm still still holding it down <laughs> all right and, let's um, go yeah perry mason on hbo as mm -hmm. being that they have watched that from season one it's been gold you know, I, I you know HBO is they're making that weird move where they're like taking out Max or whatever, and then they're like, we're gonna have the ultimate ad experience. It's like okay, like, and I, I, I see it. the meme. It's so funny. It's like, what are you gonna do? Remove like the ad placement in movies, <laughs> right? Uh, no, but probably, still. they're they're probably gonna make it worse. They're probably gonna hit that bottom tier with like double ads, like YouTube. If you're not I subscribed to premium, you, yes, yep. So yep. right now, I think it's a perfect time for us to wrap up. Chris, thank you so much yeah. for hanging out. It's been an honor. I can't wait to get you back on for issue two. And Thank everything so else in the works, too. So with that being said, everyone, it's time for us to wrap up. I hope you all have a lovely day. Most importantly, keep it geekly.